Okay, everybody, this is my spoiler review of episode six of season six of Better Call Saul. What's interesting about this one, it is directed by Giancarlo Esposito, a.k.a. Gus. And what's pretty cool is that the episode he directs, Gus isn't even in it, which makes sense and probably made things a lot easier on the directing end. But I thought that was fascinating because it's interesting when you have an episode where there's no Gus. Uh, and I actually liked a lot of things about this episode. So this is a tough one to review because watching it as an episode alone, not in the season arc, but as an episode alone through the whole show, the whole history of the show, I really enjoyed a lot of it. And I think because in that slowness, the show is notorious for this again, had scenes that was more character moving the character arcs forward and was more character based in characters we really care about, but also moving the plot forward, even though still slowly moving it forward a lot more quicker than the past two episodes, which I had a lot of problems with. But this one, I really like that, for example, the opening scene isn't just a montage that's stylish like they do all the time where, you know, we're watching someone mowing a lawn and then we'll get a little payoff at the end. This was actually showing us more stuff about Kim's past and that it was interesting to me that her mom was the one making her steal. And I like Kim's backstory as a child and that she comes from a poor family, making sense of why she is someone who's so defending of the little man. Now, I think... The issue with this episode, though, is that this episode to me should have happened two episodes ago. We could have just cut to the chase here and get it going more with getting to D-Day with Howard's story. And it almost made me think when you see them looking at their plan on the board in this episode, like that was what was sitting in the writer's room. Like, let's just stretch out the Howard Hamlin revenge story to all these plot points and little things they have to do to get to where they are for Howard, where you really could have just cut out two episodes, shown us less episodes of this happening with Howard and get us to D-Day earlier. So in the season as a whole, I think people are really feeling the weight of the slowness right now. So it makes this episode feel even slower. But again, if this was an episode that maybe was earlier on or in another season, I really did appreciate it more. It wasn't one that I was like, Last week where I was like, oh, that wasn't a good episode. The first one I didn't like. I still felt something here again because it was very Kim heavy, but it was getting us into Kim's mind. And it was the writing was a little better here, especially the scenes with the doctor vet played by Joe DeRosa, where, you know, when Kim's always kind of you're trying to read her because Jimmy's like, how could he give up being a vet? And she's just like, oh, you know, he's on to better things. I get it. So it's like you remind you that Jimmy is someone he'll just keep going with what makes sense for him to kind of get what he wants but Kim also knows there's a place to stop but where Kim gets complicated is in a moment where you know Cliff Main is really liking her now and the thing that's crazy about all this that comes out of it is that she's actually getting what she wants and she has an out now to do it a clean way that this justice reform will be that step to have her own pro bono you know firm and <laughs> it's ironic that she ends up turning around at the end because now it's not just for the sole reason of getting the Sandpiper money. It's still on this path of screwing Howard over so she's not letting go of the con. She's not letting go of that side that was really raised into her as a child by her mother. So that's where she's kind of a complicated character and always toys between that. And I like that that was a very central focus of this episode and they did a good job with the writing with Kim in this episode and those scenes didn't feel like they were just plotting along. They were actually progressing Kim's story here and Saul's story, rightfully so, because he's with Kim. Now, stuff here that wasn't, like, so necessary was, you wonder, this is basically the penultimate for the mid-season, right? And we're getting a scene with Mike watching his granddaughter again. So, I get it. You know, he's showing you that he can't even go near them right now because of Lalo. And you feel it, but it's a good scene. It's written well, but you're also like, I didn't learn anything new about Mike except that he can't stand near them right now. But do we need to know this? Like, these are the kind of things in the show you're like, do I need to know this right now? Can we know something else and kind of assume that in our heads some other way? And it's something you don't even really think about. Like, why, why do I need to see this? So we know Mike has a soft side to him and that it's his driving force is his granddaughter and his daughter-in-law so that was kind of like okay we've gotten this over and over again we don't really need this scene and it's frustrating that's happening here but i did think Giancarlo's directing was very solid and i thought there was a better pace to this one again still slow and again you get more angry when you look at the whole season because you're just like man i feel like we've got strung along where it's like you know you look at how much momentum was built in last season how exciting it got towards the end there and 
you know, you look at the main events of this season and Nacho died, right? But that was the big thing. And now we're like, oh, you could just have really ended last season, have Nacho die like he did, and then really jump into the Howard Jimmy thing from the start. I mean, episode one, did we really need to see every single point on that board to get there or just make it a smaller plan? Like, very stretched out. And finally, we're supposed to get D-Day next week. You can see in the previews. So we can get on with this. I think the relief of the second half is going to be I'm assuming they're wrapping this Howard story for good next week. I am so excited just for that as a whole to be done. So I think that will kind of push things forward where it needs to be. But it's a little scary because you're kind of like, if we're still going this slow, are they going to rush things at the end here? Because they're really still at this point in the plot where we really got to get to convincing us that Jimmy becomes this you know, Crook and Saul Goodman. So it's, it's interesting to see how they're going to work their way out of this. I still have faith in these writers. But... Again, as a whole, this first half has been very, very disappointing, and you feel that stretch, especially because they added more episodes, so you feel like you've been stringed along, too, which I'm assuming is going to be a great episode next week. It's a mid-season finale. They have to deliver. They've been hyping up this D-Day thing with Howard, and they had that twist clearly to set that up at the end where they thought they were you know, going in clear, but he's got the cast on, so that's a variable they didn't consider. So I think that, again... As a standalone, this episode is much better than the last two to me. I'm giving it an 8.2. But in the season as a whole and where it is, as a penultimate of a mid-season, and where we had just two still very, to me, overly slow episodes, this kind of, oh, it's a step in the right direction. But you're like, oh, man, like is this just a product of me being so annoyed at how this season's kind of been going as a whole that I get frustrated with it still, that maybe I would have really loved this episode if it was earlier in the season or in a previous season. So... I don't know, but I can tell you that as a standalone, I'm giving it 8.2. I still think it was solid, much better than the last two, and I have high hopes for next week. But, man, does next week got to deliver, or this first half of the season is going to be incredibly disappointing to me. And, again, that's argument people keep saying, like, oh, I just want action. It's not about that. It's about my point I've been making other reviews is that these scenes in the beginning, the slower scenes were much better because they were moving the plot a little bit and they were moving our character story more further. Character progression with Kim and getting in her mindset. That's what I'm talking about. That's what is the good slow. There is a bad slow. There is boring. And this show has had a lot of boring this season where you feel like, come on. like It's like when there were certain episodes of Saul where you're like, I don't need to see Mike put trackers on a car over and over for a 10-minute montage. You know, There's things like that where you're just stretching, stretching. So... That's how I feel, but yeah, I, I was I was impressed with this episode, but I still think it's just, I really hope it lands next week. I have faith, I have faith. I'm more positive this week, guys, but I really appreciate all you guys and giving your thoughts, and again, please keep things civil, not personal. Let's all be cool with each other, but share your thoughts. Let me know what you thought. If you loved it, you didn't like it, you're in the middle, how you think next week's going to be, and how you've really thought about this first half as a whole. I'd love to hear it. Please follow me at Steve Varley Show on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok for more of me, and I'll see you next time.